Okay, I am about to start part three for, oh, can you do it? Look at it. Look at it for the Goblin Emperor. So I'm about halfway through. And I can't say that I'm necessarily interested in it, but uh, it's doing some things well. So let's talk about that. So this is following, um, I think Maya, Maya would be how you would say his name, probably Maya. Um, who has, he's new to his position as the, as the Goblin Emperor. And he is fumbling. <laughs> he's trying so hard. Um, and I think that's what makes, that's the best part about this book is Maya, uh, the main character. I'm enjoying him so much because he just, around every corner, every single, uh, every single obstacle that he faces, every single person that he encounters, he's doing his very best to do right by everybody around him. He's doing his best to do right by the people that were affected. I should tell you what happened. Uh, there was an airship that was downed that people were killed, which is how he got into this position of the new Goblin Emperor. Um, but not just people in royalty, but also your common man that were, that were serving on the airship as well. And he's doing his best to do right by the families of the other affected people and by uh, people that he encounters that are living a life that that their greatest re request when when anything is offered to them by the emperor that their greatest request is can we, can we just have some coal my my dying mother is just really cold and we we can't afford the coal and it's like anyway no matter who he encounters be it somebody in mourning or be it someone that's suffering or be it someone who's in a position of privilege um no matter where who he talks to he's doing his best to do right by everybody around him but he also has family members people who are quite difficult to deal with and he is constantly trying to navigate how how to do these things and because of that he's leaning very heavily on the people around him on his council and the people that are following him around trying to help him asking them what am I supposed to do <laughs> like, should I give them money should I should I do this service to them should I like what do I do and receiving counsel because he really just doesn't know and trying to work through things so he just feels very uh just sweet. He's such a sweet character, but he also feels very vulnerable and, you know, he doesn't know all the customs and what's appropriate for him to be doing in this particular situation or how to handle everything. He just knows that he wants to do right by people. So he's very endearing. He's very easy to love, but he's also sassy and he's also witty and he's also strong and will stand up for himself. Um, really easy character to love. It's an incredibly slow moving book. I mean, my goodness, <laughs> does nothing happen? You have the main thing, who downed the airship? Who is behind this thing? That's what we're trying to resolve. But also maybe Maya might, might need to get married. So we should probably find a wife and also there's these internal politics and also just like the most mundane things are happening when there's this plot but it's like or we could talk about something else and it's not that it feels meandering it doesn't it just feels like everything moves at a glacial pace so I, I guess this is kind of a quick check-in um but halfway through this book I love Maya I'm I'm interested in what's going on, and I think that everything is written quite well uh, as far as especially the emotions that are coming across through Maya feeling very lonely and feeling like I'll never have a moment by myself again and, you know, it's lonely here at the top kind of feeling um, and feeling very overwhelmed with being thrusted into this new position as well as dealing with his own mourning, as well as trying to assist other people and all the emotions that Maya is feeling. I feel they hit exactly right. All the emotions that Maya experiences when he encounters other people and the suffering that they're experiencing hit exactly right. I think that's the best part about this book is the emotions come right out of the page. And the worst part for me is just that it's just not that interesting for me, for me. So if I were reading this, this is a buddy read on, on my Patreon. We uh, buddy read two books a month, and this is one of those those buddy reads. And if I were reading this on my own, then uh, I would probably not finish it. Not because I'm not enjoying it, but because I would put it down and then just always battery died. I would put it down and then just always pick up something else instead. Not because I'm not enjoying it, but just because there are a million other things that would be interesting me more. But it's a buddy read, so I will see it through. 
And I hope that the second half will pick up and completely change my mind. There's your first check-in. I hope you're having a lovely week. Welcome to the vlog. So I finished The Goblin Emperor, and I gave you a bad description of it last time. Well, not a bad description, just an incomplete one. So there is some relevance to the fact that he's a goblin, um, namely that he's the son of the elf emperor, of the elf realm or kingdom, and uh, he's the fourth son born. Uh, so he is in line for the throne, but because he's half goblin, he is basically rejected by his family and raised away from them in isolation and just not considered a part of this of this family because of his race. So when this airship that holds his father and his brothers who are next in line for the throne goes down and everybody dies and he is suddenly elevated to the position of emperor, him being half goblin is very relevant to the context surrounding this particular kingdom. I kind of didn't explain any of that in the first clip, so that, that's why it matters that he's the goblin emperor when um, being half goblin is not a positive thing in this world, or rather in this setting. And that's also why he has to learn all the court politics from the ground up because he was raised away from his family as the rejected son. So now that we have all that context out of the way, I did not like this book. Um, I didn't hate it or anything, and I actually, I think that it was very well written, I think it was good, but this is definitely a book that I can understand why so many people love it so hard, but I feel like it's either gonna be it's it's not it's a book that people are either going to connect with exactly right and it'll be a new favorite for them or it's one that that it's just like oh wow this was a big old miss and it was a big old miss for me um it's a very yeah <laughs> it's very slow here's the thing on paper it should work for me because it's very slow paced which many of my favorite books are it's very um explanatory. <laughs> Everything is described to the nth degree, which as a fan of the Wise Block Lamora, isn't a problem. No, Wise Block Lamora, Lord of the Rings, Malazan, so many of my favorite series have too much world building. And I love that. It's extremely character focused. The plot do not go, if you are a plot centric reader, don't even try this one <laughs> because it's extremely character focused and it's very day to day life learning the court politics, uh, being introduced to the family and to the other members that are relevant and trying to respond to the world around you. It's very character y, which again should work for me. I'm a very character focused reader. Plot is cool, but it's just not, it's not the thing that I read for. On paper, this should work for me. The only thing that, that on paper, Paper doesn't work for me is I'm typically not drawn to books that are very politically focused like all the political maneuverings and someone in a new position of power trying to navigate this new position that typically doesn't work for me but every other element of the story I should have loved yet I found it so boring Maya excellent main character very easy to follow very easy to love but that's all Really. I didn't care about learning the court politics or the uh, the social, political expectations on him. I didn't care about the, uh, the, the driving. I mean, the mystery was kind of interesting, but it certainly wasn't enough to carry a 450 page book for me. And things just came very easily. Any kind of opposition that was met in the plot was resolved very quickly. Um, interactions that he had uh, I don't I don't want to I don't want to be spoilery but it was just it was such a feel-good book it was such a feel-good book even though it is 
it has a very serious tone to it throughout the entire book. It's very feel good. So we have a character that's just, he's just a good guy and he's easy to love and he's easy to follow and he's easy to want to succeed and it's easy for him to succeed. Despite the many, um, despite the many obstacles and prejudices and the way that people look at him, it's just so hard because it's not exclusively true because he did have a very abusive cousin and he has a lot of trauma around that. So it's not like he doesn't suffer. It's not like he doesn't ever experience anything hard in his life. It's just that plot wise, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> It just didn't work for me. I am really curious because this is this was a buddy read for us on my Patreon and it seems like it's just interesting to see how differently people respond to it. Uh, it seems like there's two groups. One that's this is a new favorite. I'm going to be rereading it. I'm in love with it. I couldn't be happier. It was a 10 out of 10 perfect book and then good main character boring story didn't did not like and those are like the two groups of people so i'm just so curious to hear from y'all if you've read this Wh what was your response to it? how did you feel about it anyway it was it was fine it was fine i see why people like it i didn't but not because it was bad just because it just didn't work for me two more volumes of yona have been read and i loved them both again whoa the series it's a winner now. It, it was a rough start. It was a rough start, but it's a winner now. I really think that this author, this mangaka, has proved herself to be an incredibly skilled storyteller. Not just with the relationships among the core cast, but the way she writes action is very um, exciting and thrilling and has high stakes, even though it shouldn't. Even though... As a reader, I'm very analytical, so I, I look too deeply into things instead of letting a story sweep me away a lot of times. And so when actions, when action comes, I typically will say, okay, well, because of the tone set for the story and because of these six reasons, I know that probably everybody's going to be fine or probably maybe only one casualty or whatever. Like I can logic myself out of being too intense about high action or high stake scenes, but it doesn't happen. Even though all of that, all of those thought processes are, are there, it feels, I feel it and I'm in the middle of it and it's so intense. I'm so surprisingly attached to these characters. I care about everyone so much. I love them all. There's there's a good parceling of information coming where specifically Zeno where it's like I think I have him figured out but I don't know yet because information is coming to me about him so slowly that I can't tell if I have it figured out or not but it's so intriguing and I have my theories built up and I'm just I need to know what's going on same for Suwan what is going on with this man all these little hints that there's so much going on inside of his head and I just need I need to no to let me know it's just it's i i stopped this last volume stopped at a moment that was very rude so i'm really excited to read the next volume i can't because now i need to switch to vagabond so that i can be prepared for my next discussion with philip but i will next week and it's very good anyway i'm also almost done with the ember blade so we'll talk about that soon too the same day as the last clip, I'm just wearing a sweater now, but I have finished The Ember Blade. No, dadgummit, The Shadow Casket, book two. The sequel to The Ember Blade. This was, in my opinion, a solid, but not extraordinary sequel. This takes place three years after the conclusion of The Ember Blade, and we are doing some more things. Um, there were some incredible, character scenes and action scenes 
a lot of really fantastic stuff that happened in this book. I really like Chris Wooding's writing a lot. I find him to be very readable without being... He, he has very solid prose while still being so easy to read. His characters are fantastic. I loved continuing on with some of the main characters that we already know and love. We got some new characters, some of which I got attached to, some I didn't so much, but the relationships between those characters, um, there's action, there's a quest, there's heroism, betrayal, uh, questioning everything. Lots of good stuff in this book. Um, but if you didn't love the pacing in book one, if that was a big hang up for you, or if I saw a lot of people complaining that this felt very YA despite being labeled as adult, um, if those were two, if those two were your problems, if those two were some problems that you had with book one, book two is not going to save you. Book two is not going to change anything. It still has that very slow, day-to-day, -day, introspective pacing. Um, actually had a problem with it this time around. Not the pacing itself, because I do I do quite like Chris Wooding's pacing, but more in that while this plot, something was happening all the time. There was always something going on. It oftentimes was just the same thing over and over again, like the same kind of um, conflicts and conversations and, and blockades just kept, we kept circling them. So it does feel a bit like did it need to be over 800 pages? Which I did not feel that way about the Ember Blade while acknowledging that the pacing wasn't tight. I wanted every page. Whereas with this, I was like, oh, we're doing the, we're talking about this again. We're doing this one again. All right, okay, we'll do it again. Excellent scenes in this book. Excellent uh, discoveries and reveals and action and emotions. Lots of good stuff that happened, as well as some stuff that I don't feel quite as favorable about. Including, as far as some of the character stuff goes, the fact that three years past and yet some things feel like there was no passage of time like we've physically had three years but there were some things that would come up that I was like over three years you've not made any progress on that <laughs> really you you still <laughs> there, there are a few things where it really doesn't feel like the passage of time actually happened uh, which is unfortunate but I mean it's more of a nitpick the ending was fantastic though it did have a very strong ending uh, Chris Wooden can write a a very exciting conclusion and I'm definitely continuing on with the series I'll absolutely be reading book three whenever it does come out um, and I did enjoy book two, but I definitely thought I was going to enjoy it a lot more than I did. I listened to the audiobook on this over three weeks and um, definitely listened to it slower um, than I normally would, just because, or got through the audiobook slower than I normally would, just because I just kept choosing music or a YouTube video or something to listen to while I while I drove or while I cooked instead of the audiobook. There were some times where I couldn't get enough of it and I was so excited to find out what would happen next and then there were other times where I was like, I'd rather be doing something else. So yeah, I don't know. It was still good. It was still very good, but it wasn't what I it wasn't I didn't love it like I lo loved book one. It doesn't change my love for book one, but yeah, it it, it it was solid, but not extraordinary for me. I did do a little search for uh, reviews for the Shadow Casket, and I didn't see very many up yet, so if you've read it, please do let me know what you think of it. But anyway, this week I read The Goblin Emperor and The Shadow Casket, as well as continued on with Yona and Vagabond. Uh, the Vagabond discussions will continue on Tuesdays, of course. I'd love to continue chatting with you about any of these books in the comments. I post videos every, every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the main channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.